Jason, welcome to the Washington football team. Thank you, Pat. I'm excited. Do you know what you're getting into? I do. I do. I'm wide-eyed, man. I'm not. I'm not totally. I mean, I should say that with the right uh, with the right amount of humility. I know what I know, um, and what I do know is that say what you want about what's happened before. I've heard in all my conversations with Dan and Tanya Snyder leading to this about a new direction that's rooted in changing culture first, which resonates to the way that I lead and the way that I think about high-performing organizations. And they use words like inclusive transparent, open, trusting, and creating that on the football side, which Coach Revere has already started to do, and creating that on the business side, which is now my mandate to do. And the reason I believe it, and the reason I'm excited to come in is because it's not just words. They hired Coach Ron Revere, who's not just a great tactician, but also espouses those values in a real way. Hired Julie Donaldson, who is a ship in the way that we do our public face and our media. And they brought in independent investigators to handle the sexual harassment stuff. And they made swift action on the bad actors that were found. Like to me, it's, there's more than just words. There's a bit of action there. And there's a lot more to do, but I'm game because of that. Now, how did this all come about? Did he call you? Did you call him? Was there a headhunter involved? I don't know. How did yeah, this work? Our, you know, I think it was sort of inevitable we'd meet at some point, right? Like I'm a business executive, former player in the D.C. area. They're the owners of the football team that exists in the DC area. And eventually our networks just overlap and they reached out. Um, and then the conversation started as I shared about values, shared culture, shared you know, our biggest mistakes of the past and had really transparent and open conversation that you know, got us to a good place where we were excited to work together. Did you meet at a restaurant and seal the deal over a steak or something? Oh, you can't meet at restaurants, can you? No, 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 um, no. But we, I mean, we started just like everything else, just like we're doing here. We started on Zoom, and uh, and then you know, uh, there's there's opportunities because of the testing protocols with the NFL to be able to meet in person, and so we did find a way to be face to face to really get to know each other. Now you live here in Washington, don't you? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in, well, I'm in Virginia. I'm in Northern Virginia, so I'm in the area. How long have you lived around here? Been here since 2013, so this is home now. You know, my my youngest kid was born at, you know, Fair Oaks Hospital, and you know, this is this is our home. This is our this is our roots. So this was a fantastic opportunity on multiple measures. You know, it's it's home, but but also it brings together my identity as a football player. You know, I've been a football player since I was seven years old. You know, playing out in the California heat with my dad as my coach, and you know, going to Northwestern and playing on a Big Ten championship team, and toiling my way through the league undrafted and getting fired every other day until I made it and became a team captain. You know, football is fundamental to who I am as a person. And then, you know, on the other side, as a business leader since then for the last decade of sharpening my analytic thinking and leading organizations at their toughest moments through real complex transformations, like there's no other thing that would bring those two together so neatly as this. Um, in ho At home where I don't have to move, like, I mean, it's really remarkable and I'm grateful. When you're the first person of color at anything, it's meaningful to you um, because you know that there's so many people that came before you to sort of break that glass and, 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 and soften that glass for you. You know, and if I think about this role in particular, Kevin Warren, who's now the commissioner of the Big Ten, was a COO of the Vikings for many years. And he basically did all the aspects of this role just without the title, you know? So there are a bunch of cracks in that proverbial ceiling before I came along. So it's meaningful uh, for that way to you know, honor the folks that, 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 that paved the way. I think it's also meaningful, you know, in a sport where the majority of the on-field talent is black and uh, seeing, you know, a role model that looks like them, um, uh, but also has a shared experience to be able to pivot to be on the business side of things is, you know, just opens the aperture on what's possible. And, and football players to me are some of the most brilliant athletes on the planet. The amount of data that they are able to intake and make intuitive and then make decisions on the field is remarkable. And so I hope that more and more players look at this as a viable option for them um, going forward. Um, uh, but, you know, ultimately, you know, while there is some like, you know, exciting demography about the decision, I think the approach that the Snyders took, you know, both to Coach Revere, Julie Donaldson, myself, was about the best available person. Um, who fit the role most perfectly. And so, you know, all this other stuff is wonderful and should be celebrated, but it's icing on the cake. And we're going to get to work and, and make stuff happen. Give me your message to the football fans of the city of Washington. Yeah, I, I would say your trust 
has not been in vain. <laughs> uh, there has been so much trust upon trust piled into the, what I see as a relationship between the fans and the organization, just like any relationship. And I think the fans have continued to invest loads and loads of trust and belief and hope and forward thinking and optimism. Um, and I think we're at a moment where that's, that, that down payment is actually gonna really pay off. You know, you've got a fantastic coach, you've got a shift in culture that's happening on the business side, and hopefully you will feel that very soon. Because um, one of the things that I think is critically important is that we actually engage with the fans at a more frequent clip, in a more personal and dynamic way, technology notwithstanding, there is a way to engage fans in a meaningful and substantive way where they know that they are the lifeblood that has held this organization and kept its momentum over the years. And I think you're already seeing the first fruits of this with the identity and the brand, um, engaging fans in that. And the plan is to open that up and to be very collective and community-based in making that decision. We got to talk about the name. Yeah. They need a new name. What's the name going to be, Jason? <laughs> um, to me, it's more than a name. It's more than a name. It's more than a logo. The word I've been using is identity because it's about what we represent to the outside world. It's going to inform the way that we do our charitable and community strategy in the DMV area. It's going to represent the way that it's going to inform the way that we act as corporate citizens in the DMV area. It's going to inform the way that we engage our fans and in what modalities and how we do it. And so, and it should also take into consideration the area in which we're rooted, its unique history, the history of the franchise. So there are so many factors that need to go into. We're going to take our time and do it right and do it in a collective way where we get lots of input. Um, but, the, but it's so much bigger than a name. It's so much bigger than a name. It's going to inform everything that we do on the business side and the football. Have you ever been to FedEx Field? Have you ever seen a game out there? Yes, I've played on FedEx Field. <laughs> um, I don't know if we won or not. I can't remember. I mean, I was with the Browns. So, uh, you know, take your pick. You that know. could have been an L. <laughs> hey, but we need a new stadium. Don't you think we need a new state? Would you bring the team back to Washington? I mean, the, the, the stadium is part of what, um, stadium location and build is part of what I'm excited about. I've got a lot to learn about how location is determined and all of that. It's it's a different beast. It's probably a handful of people that have built stadiums in their lifetime, right? I'm not one of them yet. I will be. Um, and when I start next Monday, because I'm in week negative one, I'll start to learn about where we are in the process. But what, what I do know is that a lot of the research that I did before at my previous firm was about equitable and inclusive growth and economic development that provides resources and economic uplift across multiple demographics of people, across all types of neighborhoods. Uh, to businesses of all types, small, big, large, women-owned, minority-owned, veteran-owned. And that vision of building this stadium with those equity principles built in is what I'm really eager to take on. It fits with the ethos of the DMV area. Um, and, and I think it's, it's the challenge of a lifetime, and I'm excited to take it on. Can't you just see a big football stadium as part of the Washington skyline? Of course. What a shot on Sunday night football. Of course, of course you can see it. Um, I mean, there's so, this is, this is, it's an embarrassment of riches in this area because you've got three dynamic jurisdictions with unique cultural heritage and great leadership across DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Um, there, I, I'm just eager to dive in uh, to see where things are at because it's almost like you can't go wrong, but I, I, hear, I hear you loud and clear, Pat. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You've got a lot of work ahead of you. We're happy to have you. Welcome to the Washington football team or whatever they're going to call it in the future. And best of luck to you. We need some wins along yeah, the way. Yeah, we sure do. We sure do. We sure do. And I think those are coming. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much, sir. Of course.